To help us understand the mole, we're going to have a look at some molar calculations. Let's start with this one, which says, what is the mass of 0.5 moles of sulphur? Well, sulphur is an element on the periodic table, so the first thing we're going to find is its relative atomic mass. Okay, and The value of AR, if you look on the periodic table, is equal to 32. And then we make a statement using the mole. We say this, that one mole of sulphur, that's sulphur atoms, has a mass of 32 grams. That's to say the mass of one mole of sulphur in grams is the same number as its relative atomic mass. We then say if one mole of sulphur weighs 32 grams, then 0.5 moles of sulphur will weigh y grams. Now this is something which will be repeated over and over again in chemistry and in particular in molar calculations. It's called a rule of three. We then do this. We do what we call cross multiply. So once you've formed this rule of three where you have one, two, three knowns and one unknown, we then cross multiply. We say one multiplied by y is equal to 0.5 multiplied by 32. Let's just move that over a little bit, make a bit of space. Okay, so we then form an equation out of this. We say we say 1 multiplied by y is equal to 0.5 times 32. Obviously, 1 multiplied by y is y, which is what you want, and 0.5 multiplied by 32 is 16. So we can say, therefore, that 0.5 moles of sulphur weighs 16 grams. Now this is just a simple example just to show this rule of three technique and the cross multiplying technique and we're going to use it again and again. So let's have a look at another problem. This time we're asking a different question. We're asking this time how many moles are there present in 30 grams of sodium? So we start off again with the relative atomic mass. We go to the periodic table. We find that sodium weighs 23, Okay, has a relative atomic mass rather of 23. And then we make our statement. We then say that one mole of sodium, I, wrote, I won't write of sodium, I'll just write the arrow, weighs 23 grams. Then the question is here, how many moles weighs 30 grams? We then cross multiply. We say 1 multiplied by 30 equals y multiplied by 23. So 1 times 30 equals 23 times y. And so resolving that equation, we then find that y is equal to 30 over 23 moles which is equal to 1.3 moles. Now, this might all seem a bit pointless to you at the moment, but you will see that there is a point in this when we start calculating how much of a certain product is produced during a chemical reaction. And we'll be looking at that in part two. So let's carry on. And this time we're going to look at a compound rather than an element. And we're gonna take some calcium carbonate and we'll say, how many moles are there present in 10 grams of calcium carbonate? Well, this time we've got to find the relative formula mass of calcium carbonate. So we need to know what is the value of MR. That's the symbol for the relative formula mass. Well, to know that, we've got to know the formula for calcium carbonate, and that's CaCO3. And then we go to the periodic table and we find the relative atomic masses of these elements and do our sums. So we find that the relative atomic mass of calcium is 40, and that's 40, plus carbon is 12, plus oxygen is 16 multiplied by 3, which is easy, that's 48 plus 12 is 60 plus 40, which is a hundred. Okay, so the relative formula mass for calcium carbonate is a hundred. And now we do our rule of three. 
So we start again with the same statement. We always start with this statement. We say one mole of calcium carbonate, and we've just calculated that to be 100 grams. Then we say how many moles y is equal to 10 grams. Well, you then cross multiply. 1 multiplied by 10 equals 100 multiplied by y. 1 times 10 will spell it out equals 100 times y. That gives us y is equal to 0 0.1 of a mole. Let's move on. This time we're going to have a look at the molar volume of a gas. So we're going to ask ourselves first the question, how many moles are there in 10 litres of carbon dioxide gas? Now, unlike in the previous problems, this time we don't need to calculate the relative formula mass of carbon dioxide. We just make use of the molar gas rules. And these state that one mole of any gas at standard temperature and pressure so there can be any gas, whether it's carbon dioxide or oxygen or helium, it doesn't matter which it is, one mole of that gas will always occupy 24 litres, which is also 24 decimeter cubes. I'll put under that, and that's decimeter cubed. It's the same thing, exactly the same measurement at room temperature and pressure, RTP. That's 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere. And then we complete our rule of three by saying how many moles, y moles, will then occupy 10 litres. Okay, so we do our cross multiplying again. We say y multiplied by 24, or 24 times y is equal to one times 10. Let's spell it out. Okay, so y will be equal to 10 divided by 24 moles, which is equal to 0 0.42 moles. So 0 0.42 moles of carbon dioxide will occupy a volume of 10 litres. Now in this problem, we're asking the reverse. This time we're asking, what is the volume occupied by 1.5 moles of oxygen? So we make our rule of three again, stating that one mole of any gas, including oxygen, will occupy 24 litres. Then 1.5 moles of the same gas will occupy y litres. We cross multiply 1.5 times 24, 1 times y. 1 times y is equal to 1.5 times 24. Or y is equal to 36 litres. So we can say that 1.5 moles of oxygen molecules will occupy a volume of 36 litres at room temperature and pressure.